So this little guy just came in the mail, the Hover Air X1 Pro Max. Super amped about it. What's in the box? Good question. Let's take a look. So it looks like we have the drone itself, folds in half, got a stabilized gimbal on it, autonomous flying drone, and this is the Hover Air Max. First thing that looks pretty quality, what's this? Aromatic, let me smell it. Oh, it smells pretty good. Hey, I'll put that right here. Or what's inside of the rest of the box? Please read before your first flight. What other goodies do they give us? Massive manual. Nope. Wow, a little case now this is a good time to mention i didn't get the mac daddy i just got the standalone drone so none of the things like the beacon or anything like that carrying case i appreciate that you know what i mean and a usb uh overall this actually looks pretty dang quality i won't know much until we go out and fly it but that is your obli how do you say that a big a big, a, a, something that is your mandatory unboxing if you haven't seen this little small selfie autonomously flying drones from the new lineup from the folks at zero zero robotics bringing forth two new models the hover air x1 pro and this one the hover air x1 pro max i have a link down below and you can take a look at one of the videos that i did basically comparing the pro to the pro max very lightweight super discreet also folds in half so it's really easy to stick in your pocket actually have a stabilized gimbal here it is a one over one 0.3 CMOS, 2.5 aperture. To give you an idea of that size of sensor, this thing uh, has the same size sensor as a DJI Mavic, so pretty impressive. It does have vision in the back and some sensors, and of course, sensors on the bottom. Nothing on the side, even though it says it says has side and rear protection. Uh, it must just be coming off of this vision module and this sensor module. It also has a USB-C here that is for charging. And then one of the things that I really appreciate is they've included this little slot here, which is gonna give you the ability to put in an SD card give you a bit more memory than what is on board. So that's something that the original model of the Hover X1 lacked. Really quality build, definitely has a little bit more weight than the original one. Yeah, I'm super impressed with this just out of the box, but just like anything, that's fine if it looks cool, feels cool, made quality, but we gotta take this thing out flying. <sighs> Now you just saw a couple examples of the autonomous mode and we were shooting in 4K in a couple different frame rates. Now one of the things to mention, all of that slow motion you saw was actually in 4K 120, which is pretty dang incredible for such a small drone to be able to shoot in something like 120 frames per second. Now in terms of autonomous, well, we're using one right now, which is a dolly track. We also showcased a follow, a side track, an orbit and a zoom in. Now there's a couple other ones and you can check them out via the application. Now it's really important to get comfortable with the application for two reasons. First and foremost, well, you're gonna be able to adjust not only the frame rate, and the resolution inside the app of each of these autonomous modes, but you're also going to be able to do things like set a couple different variables in terms of how far you want this thing to be away from you. For example, I'm using Dolly Track right now and I have it set to near. Now I could set it to far and it will push it back. The other thing is I'm actually recording my voice on the application itself. One of the cool things there is it's actually taking the noise of the drone out via the application. So let me know how this sounds. It's called Omni Terrain, Omni, Om, Omni Terrain. And you know what Omni Terrain is? Well, it's a feature actually that they included in this year's lineup on both the Pro and the Max. And what that simply means is we are now going to be able to manually fly this thing for things like water, snow, and over cliffs. So that's a really good feature that both of them include. Now I mentioned we're gonna be flying this manually. Now you do have two options and unfortunately, 
I'm going with the lower budget option where I didn't get the accessories that allow you to actually have a joystick attached to your phone. So it's going to give you physical, actual joysticks to fly this thing like you're normally used to, especially if you use anything like a regular drone or something like an RC car, that's gonna give you that same experience. But if you don't have that, you can always open up the phone's application and use their soft joysticks, which we'll be doing today. One of the other great things, at least about the Max, is it shoots in 8K. So we're gonna put this sucker in 8K and we're gonna fly over one of my favorite places in the world, a river. All right, here goes nothing to the gauntlet. Now, one of the other things I did do here is I put it on 4K 30 frames per second, but I moved it into HDR. And one of the things about this drone, which kind of sucks, is the fact that you can only shoot 10 bit in HDR. So if you're looking to color grade, you're stuck with that HDR. So I hope that's something that they change. And just to clarify that, in all these other modes, apparently it's not 10 bit. So with that, let's go try to break this thing. So I have it on close follow. Let's see how it does through here. This part up here is where I'm kind of like, uh, what's gonna happen to it? We'll see. And it actually sounds like it's still following me. I don't know. Now this part, I don't suspect it will make it through. If it does, I'll be so what was that last word well that last word was impressed and it's not that i'm not impressed it did stutter there and it actually didn't crash it sensed something stopped and it couldn't go anywhere because it was really tight in there so it just landed rather softly and that's something i want to mention to you that this thing is obviously not perfect but it is pretty good in all my testing i've had it happen a couple times and and when i look at those circumstances that it happened in or the situation it happened in well, I kind of understand why it happened. So I'm not really mad at the drone. It's light years ahead. I mean, we had nothing on the original and even something like the Neo doesn't have anything. So I just think in terms of tracking, this is gonna be something that is going to help a lot of folks out if they're looking to do those type of shots. Now, remember, I would recommend if it's close quarters like this, just keep it as close as you can. Go into the application and set it to near. This way it will, you know, there's just not a chance that it will get lost behind you. And I noticed that helps quite a bit as well. Well, I've had some situations where I had it farther behind me and it got caught behind a tree or something like that. So I think the closer you can get it to you, if that's the look you're going for, or at least you can deal with that look, well, that's probably the best thing to do if you want the best consistency of it following you. So I have a little bit of a hike to get home. I got to get on it and I'll see you back there. So I just got back and I spent some time looking over the footage and doing a quick couple edits. And I have to say, I'm rather impressed. The video quality coming out of this one over 1 1.3 inch sensor is pretty impressive. I'm not going to say it's the best. I'm not even going to say it's the best in this class of one over 1 1.3 sensors we've seen this year, but it's pretty dang good. Of course, the automated features are what it's designed for and it does them all really, really well. And in fact, I really enjoyed the follow feature. And I I think it has a little bit of a leg up on some of its competitors because it does have that obstacle avoidance. It's already saved me quite a few times. Now this thing doesn't crash like some of the other ones on the market. It will actually stop if it can't get around it and then it will land. So that is a huge advantage and you'll just have a whole ton of fun being able to just push the button goes flies off your hand and does a really cool shot in orbit or whatever that's going to be phenomenal but one of the things that stood out to me this time was actually the manual controls the manual controls on the phone even were really good and really responsive and with this thing flying we had a little bit of wind but it handled it like a champ i know this thing has a level five wind resistance but seeing it in action i can't believe that it actually produced anything near stable footage and in fact speaking of the stable footage every 
everything I saw was really, really stable and I didn't have to apply any stability in post whatsoever. So a lot of the stuff you saw on the river where I was manually flying, I did one sweep around towards the end where I'm actually creeping to the right and going up a little bit. And it actually took it like a champ. And when I looked at it, I was like, I, I can't believe this is the footage that came out of it and I don't have to do anything with it. It's that good. So the gimbal on this thing, I think is pretty incredible and they definitely improved the ability to manually fly this thing. So now if we're looking at a drone that you can slide in your pocket, take along, do all these crazy cool automated shots, also, rest assured, it's going to work in some pretty windy conditions and give you really stable shots if you do want to fly something like manual. Well, I think this might be the drone for you. I'm really excited that I have this. And to be honest with you, I am super duper excited that, well, it gets to be a part of my quiver because I imagined and I'm going to be reaching for this more often than not and definitely more often than the rest of my drones. Well, anyways, I hope this helped you. And if it did, please considering dropping a like and subscribing. My name's Hill Phantom and I'll see you next time.